1940, there was a production made of a motion picture of the, a solemn high mass. It was produced by the Perpetual Novena in honor of our sorrowful mother. It was narrated and featured commentary by Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, not only one of the most famous and popular of Catholic broadcasters, but perhaps one of the most famous broadcasters of all time. Today we will continue our series on the hidden treasure, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. This is Julius Smetona. You're watching What Catholics Believe. And now I'd like to invite you to join me for the Mass where it begins shortly before the consecration with commentary by Archbishop Sheen. The priest does not consecrate the bread and wine together, but separately, as our Lord did at the Last Supper and as he commanded his church to do. By this separate consecration of the bread and wine, we mystically represent the manner in which Christ died on the cross of Calvary, namely by the separation of his body and his blood. The sentiment of the faithful at the moment of consecration should be, Dear Lord, I believe that thou art really and truly present on the altar under the appearance of bread and wine. But as sacrificed with thee, I say, This is my blood. Take it as thine own. I care not if the species or appearances of my life remain, my duties or my health or my wealth. These are but the accidents. But my substance, my body, my soul, my intellect, my will, all that makes me thine. Take, consecrate, transubstantiate, so that the Heavenly Father looking down upon thee may say to me as to thee, Thou art my beloved son. In thee am I well. action of the canon is stopped for a special prayer of remembrance of all brothers in Christ. The celebrant begs God for mercy upon the souls in purgatory, our departed brethren. Then follows a remembrance for us sinners, the living brethren, that we may one day be joined with the saints in heaven, our triumphant.
cannon of the mass is solemnly closed with a joyful cry of praise and adoration. The climax of this exaltation is the elevation of the sacred host Salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati. Now a new movement in the Mass begins. The act of giving to God is complete. We now receive from God. As a prelude to receiving the greatest gift of all, Holy Communion, the celebrant sings the Lord's Prayer. Adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in cielo et in terra. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Reverently, the celebrant kisses the gold pattern upon which the sacred host is about to rest. Just as Christ himself prepared for the First Holy Communion at the Last Supper by breaking the bread with his apostles, so the celebrant now breaks the sacred host. Here omnia secula secula away the sins of the world. Join us. The prayer for peace. Recalling the promise of Christ, the celebrant asks God to give peace and unity to his church on earth. The kiss of peace Similar fraternal love which would exist between all Christians. the consecration. For throughout the universe, the sacrament follows the sacrifice. Before the food we eat can become the sacrament which nourishes us, it must first be sacrificed. That is, plucked up from its roots, submitted to the knife and the purging fire. By receiving Holy Communion after the sacrifice of the Mass, do we realize in the truest sense of the word that we live by what we slay. 
For Christ on the cross is the victim slain by our sins. Through his merciful power, we live by his death. Having consumed the sacred host, the precious blood. Should any particles have fallen, they are gathered up and placed in the chalice. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul to life everlasting. Amen. In this small chamber called the tabernacle is housed Emmanuel, God with us, under the appearance of small white posts. As he was hidden and housed under swaddling bands and human flesh in the crib of Bethlehem. Deacon and subdeacon chant the confitior, the confession of sin. <laughs> Mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ideo fregor, beatum maniam sempre virginem, beatum Michaela Marcangelum, beatum Ioannem Baptistam, Sanctos Apostolos Heinum et Paulum, Omnem Sanctos et Te Patrem. Orare pro me, ad dominum Deum nostrum. The celebrant implores God to forgive the sins of the people and blesses the congregation as a symbol of this forgiveness. Domine, non sum dig. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. As Christ gave his own body and blood to his apostles at the Last Supper, he now gives himself to his people through the hands of the priest. There is one law running through all nature. To live, we must eat. As the plants and the animals might say to man, at the articulate speech, unless you eat me, you shall not have life in you. So too now, Christ, the King of the universe, says to man, Unless you eat me, you shall not have life in you. The law of transformation thus holds sway throughout nature as through grace. The higher is transformed into the lower. Plants into animals, animals into man, and man into Christ, by which he becomes a Christian.
watching what cap <coughs> father jenkins you know jerry as this program has done so much good in the brief time it's been on the air and that good is represented by the hundreds of letters that we've received over the months that uh, in thanksgiving to the people who contribute to the program i offer mass every first saturday for the intentions of those who continuously support this program um, as they see from the program today uh, the final segment of the mass narrated by bishop sheen the sacrifice of the mass as the catholic church knows it is far different from what they're probably seeing in their local parishes and uh, that is because there has been a revolution in the church in fact uh, if saint Teresa of lusia or uh, saint thomas aquinas or saint anthony or saint francis were to walk into a modern so-called catholic parish any one of them would probably think that he or she made a mistake and ask directions to the local catholic church because the new mass as it is offered in the parishes bears no no similarity whatsoever to the mass of the centuries for example look at the priest standing at the altar holding his thumb and forefinger together and he holds his thumb and forefinger together from the moment that he consecrates the host until the moment that he washes his fingers at the ablutions after distributing holy communion and he does that because once his fingers have touched the consecrated host he does not want to touch anything else he does that not only out of reverence for the host but also because if there should be any particle of the sacred host that clings to his fingers he does not want that to be lost and you'll notice when holy communion was being distributed at the communion rail uh, the very rail often missing from the modern modern parishes having been torn out destroying any distinction between uh, the sanctuary and the rest of the church but when they were distributing holy communion at the communion rail the server or the deacon in this case held the golden plate which is the communion plate or the paten and that plate is used to prevent any particle of the host from being lost this is because the catholic conviction is that the host is the body and blood of jesus christ after the consecration has taken place not just a mere symbol but in the modern parishes that has been totally dispensed with and uh, the result of this is that it has completely eroded the belief of the faithful in the real presence of the blessed sacrament and uh, even in the minds of the priests if you were to take a poll of the priests of any diocese right now i think you'd be shocked uh, at how many uh, believe anything but what the catholic church teaches about the real presence of our lord and the blessed sacrament now take this mass that was offered back in uh, 1940s <coughs> and compare it to the modern liturgies um, do you know that back in 1975 in columbus ohio at the parish saints philip and james a priest by the name of father richard engel who was the the pastor of the parish offered a garbage mass and before the table he set an enormous garbage pail in which people uh, who were attending the mass were supposed to come up during the so-called offertory and throw into the pail as an offering household garbage that they brought for that purpose that's what they were offering at the foot of that table and the idea was he was supposed to be dramatizing the theme christ the garbage collector ten years later that man was still the pastor of that parish and th you see this kind of liturgy is perfectly acceptable to vatican ii because for vatican ii religion is what you make it basically it's not what comes down from god to you it's what you produce for for god whatever comes out of your your heart and your psyche for god this is a, a social religion uh, of of mankind that uh, has nothing to do with the supernatural religion revealed by our lord jesus christ the mass that has been offered here um, and portrayed uh, over the uh, the last 50 years on this on this um, film footage uh, immortalizes <coughs> what is immortal the holy sacrifice of the mass 
And uh, this is what Catholics should hold to. This is, represents what Catholics believe. Now, it struck me to what pains people went to show reverence and, and to preserve uh, the, the sacred host from contamination, how the priest had to awkwardly raise the chalice with his hands like this. Yes, that there. is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> that is because of, uh, of the two realities in the Mass. We have spoken about the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and Father Jenkins has spoken of, and we've alluded to, and we saw in the film, the, uh, the reality of our Lord's presence in the Holy Eucharist. So in the Eucharist, we have both the sacrifice and the sacrament. And uh, what has been under attack uh, is both the sacrifice and the sacrament. And these two realities are, are taught very clearly in sacred scripture. Even in the Old Testament, there are allusions to the New Testament sacrifice. Just by way of illustration, we have, for example, in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, the 14th chapter, the 18th verse, the reference to Melchizedek. Uh, we read there, but Melchizedek, the king of Salem, bringing forth bread and wine, for he was the priest of the Most High God, blessed him. And the one that he blessed was Abraham. And the apostle Paul, in his epistle to the Hebrews, the fifth chapter, the fifth verse, makes it clear that Melchizedek in the Old Testament was a figure for Christ, because Christ would institute a new sacrifice that would use bread and wine, which would be transformed into his body and his blood. In uh, chapter 5, verse 5 of the epistle to uh, the Hebrews, written by St. Paul, we read, So Christ also did not glorify himself, that he might be made a high priest. But he said unto him, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And Isaiah the prophet makes reference to the fact that in the New Testament, there will be priests taken from among the Gentiles. And then finally, in the prophet Malach Malachias, there is a reference to the holy sacrifice of the Mass, chapter 1, verse 10, which says, I have no pleasure in you. That is, God has no pleasure in Israel because of their sins, <coughs> saith the Lord of hosts, and I will not receive a gift of your hand. <coughs> For from the rising of the sun, and here is the reference to the New Testament sacrifice. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down, my name is great among the Gentiles. And in every place there is sacrifice. And there is offered to my name a clean oblation. For my name is great among the Gentiles, saith the Lord of hosts. And this is the Old Testament uh, reference to the sacrifice that Christ would institute in the New Testament. And then, of course, we have the reality of his, our Lord's presence in the Holy Eucharist testified to in a very long and most beautiful dissertation in John chapter 6. Father Marchka. These two realities that Father just spoke about, the sacrament and the sacrifice, are more uh, profoundly expressed in the traditional Latin Mass than in the New Mass. And the uh, priest here and that we work with know that they were ordained to offer up the holy sacrifice of the Mass. They are made to do that particular function. People oftentimes ask us, they are coming back to the traditional Mass, we never went to the traditional Mass, well, Father, I don't understand Latin. I don't know what's going on up there. If you never uh, heard the Latin language before, if you never even uh, have attended a traditional Latin Mass, you know that something supernatural is happening upon that altar. The priest has the power to call down upon God on the altar to change the bread and the wine into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. This I see when people say to me, I do not understand the new Mass, I do not understand the Latin, I say, 
uh, I witnessed the new mass done in some particular parishes uh, throughout uh, the last uh, few years, and I say I do not understand what is happening in the new mass with all the crazy things that are happening upon their altars. You do know what is taking place on, in the traditional mass, that something, a supernatural act is taking place upon that altar, and is more clearly expressed in the traditional Latin mass. Father Jenkins. Uh, people who are not Catholics often have trouble understanding why we revere the mass the way we do. Of course, if they understood that we believe that there becomes present there the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ, mystically representing his sacrifice on Calvary, they would have some idea as to why we are so devoted to the Mass and why we consider it so crucial to maintain the Mass as the cornerstone of the faith. You know, the Mass is the supreme expression of our Lord's love, as Calvary was. Uh, there were very few people who were able to stand on Calvary and witness the sacrifice of redemption. But through the Mass, our Lord has made it possible for all of those throughout history who would believe in him and love him to stand at the foot of Calvary and to be present at the sacrifice of our redemption. This our Lord did by his infinite power, moved by his infinite love. Today you've watched what Catholics believe or we conclude